Time to cross the T's, dot the I's, the rest of the week's top stories. With us now, attorney Clint David from David Goodman and Madol, economist Lindsay Piazza, and Fox Business correspondent Dennis Neal is all gathered around. Let's start with that ruling that came out this past week about Toyota. The government said driver error was to blame for most of the accidents for that sudden acceleration, not Toyota's electronics. So... Clint, let's start with you. How does Toyota get their reputation and their money back? Well, first of all, Tom, that loud screaming you're hearing, those are plaintiff's lawyers running naked, screaming in the streets because their litigation just got torpedoed by this report. So that's, that's first of all. Uh, I just find it interesting that our finest engineers in the world have attributed this to, I believe they called it pedal misapplication theorem. In other words, uh, Stupid drivers not knowing the difference between the gas and the brake. As far as is uh, Toyota's concerned, I, I think it's going to be just like Tylenol. People have very short memories. Uh, if the value is there, if the quality of the product is there, you know, they will regain their market share. They're never going to gain back what they lost, but they're going to be fine. So, Dennis, should uh, uh, Ray LaHood, Transportation Secretary, at least somewhere along the line say, uh, we're sorry? He owes that company an apology, Tom. Yeah. And he owes an apology to the shareholders of Toyota. The collective value of that brand was hurt so badly by what happened. We might even have a chart on this. If you look here, Toyota Interbrand, big assessment firm on brand value, says that Toyota's value is at $26 billion. It's down in two years 23% from $34 billion. That is partly the fault of the media that rushed to judgment, but they rushed to judgment reporting with government officials said. However, the inner brand people tell me Toyota is an amazingly strong brand and that its loyal customers did not leave it even during this terrible scandal. All right, Lindsay, <laughs> we, 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 I just found out you're in the middle of getting your PhD. That's true. Yes. Uh, pointy head in <laughs> economics. And, and, but, but look at the, the data on this. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of recalls that are going on all the time. Why did the government on their website, Department of Transportation, make this huge case out of, look, Toyota, Toyota, and nice. especially when uh, they are owners of General Motors? Well, what's Chrysler. so interesting, too, is that we did see a big push to get additional universal safety regulation legislation pushed through as well, which could have cost the industry hundreds of millions of dollars if they had gotten through. So not only did Toyota sidestep a big number of litigations sitting in the federal court, but the industry as a whole sidesteps some big problems. Well, and that. But the thought that, that government would be smart enough, anyone in government would be shrewd enough to say, you know what, we own GM. Let's hurt Toyota so we can lift the value of our GM shares. I think that that is beyond credibility. So, yeah. Nobody is that savvy in government I about think the market. Yeah. Yeah, Normally that would be the case, except for they're not smart enough. All right, I'm we'll take it out of that. Let's go on to a Connecticut case where uh, when a Connecticut uh, woman was fired for bashing her boss on Facebook, talking about dumb. Well, guess what? The National Labor Relations Board filed a complaint. And guess who heard the complaint? The National Labor Relations Board. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something's crazy here. In fact, I, let me go back to, to you uh, on this, Clint, because this woman bashed her, her boss, and the National Labor Relations Board said it's okay because they had a labor contract that said it was okay. Does that make sense? Well, first of all, I think anybody that is stupid enough to bash their employer on Facebook might deserve to get fired. But I think there's several takeaways from this. First of all, uh, most states are employment at will states, which means people can get fired for any or no reason. So employees, this is not a green light for you to go out and bash your employer. As long as it's not for discriminatory reasons, your employer can still terminate you and just call it for something else. Uh, employers, the takeaway here is you've got to narrow down your social networking policies. It cannot be overbroad. Uh, that's what the NLRB has ruled here. Narrow it down. You can still have restrictions on obscene or abusive communication and have that be in your policies. Uh, but that's really the takeaways from this. But I will tell you now, uh, the, the genie's out of the bottle. Uh, Facebook now is getting first right and other, uh, First Amendment and other protection. And uh, this just is a far step to let people know that this is like writing a letter to the editor of a magazine. Yeah, at the same time, Lindsay, I mean, this is where, you know, this woman wrote this. And, and there are laws that protect coworkers talking about their job and their pay right. and everything else with each other. 
But Facebook is telling the world. This is well, a different, different whole new era. It, it certainly is. But what this is saying is that an employer can't legislate what you say electronically different than what you would say in person or what you would say uh, in print. So essentially what it has to be is a universal law and, and restrictions on what they say. Now, it, it's not unfounded for a company to put out restrictions on talking about income, talking about revenue, talking about uh, insider company policy. So it, while it may have been very stupid for someone to go on and bash their boss, it necessarily doesn't uh, result in firing, but it does impede their employer-employee relationship. Yeah, and so that's it's a, a and terrible and ruling. Okay, yeah. there's no way around. That's it's a sure. terrible ruling. I believe that we have freedom of speech, but we don't have the right to be employed, no matter what we do with that freedom of speech. Sometimes you've got to be willing to bend, right? What I wish, though, is that instead of government stepping in and saying you can't do this, and they did this because there's a labor dispute, and that's the, that's why it came in under that fig right. leaf. I wish instead we would decide that certain employers that decide to let their employees be freer will hire better, more qualified people and do better than employees that crack down and don't that employers that crack down and don't let their workers say a word. I wish the market would take Well care again, they're they're not stepping on employees' feet saying they can't say a word, but they're trying to make it non discriminatory across different classes of communication. But they have a right to stop us from saying bad stuff about our company. Speaking of different classes, we got another one here. We got Ariana Huffington. She was in the news this past week. She pocketed approximately a hundred million dollars from the sale of the Huffington Post to AOL. So now She's got about 6,000 bloggers that contributed to the Huffington Post who got paid zero, nothing, and now they're saying, hey, where's my share of the profit? They sure are the ultimate. Tom Sawyer, congratulations, Ariana Huffington. You know, for years I've been thinking that online pounded down the value of the printed word. At Forbes, when I was the managing editor, we paid up to $3 a word for an article. You end up going online, you, and if you get lucky, if you get paid, you file 400 words and get 50 bucks for all of the 6,000 free contributors, I want to say. You rode that platform. You knew what you were doing. You don't deserve any money now. All It'd right. be nice of her if she wanted to sh sh share it. Hey, Clint, uh, the president, you know, was out speaking to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce earlier this week, and he said yeah that uh, companies need to share their profits with their, the American workers, so maybe Ariana Huffington should share her profits, huh? You know what? It would be nice had she done that. It would have been the uh, very nice thing to do. Is it realistic? Absolutely not. This whole transaction is about money right now, which is why she took the vast majority uh, of the sellout in cash rather than in stock yeah, it was uh, to the tune of about $100 million. so much for betting on the growth of AOL. Yep. Uh, you know, I also find it somewhat ironic that she has bashed in the past crony capitalism and taking care of the middle class, uh, yet when it comes uh, to a situation like this, she takes the 100 mil and runs. Uh, a little bit of a hypocrisy there. Well, she was a Republican, remember? It's that easy before to she was a Democrat. I'm going to have to argue the other side. Uh, you know, when you get 100 million, suddenly ideology gets away it, it from it. There, there, there is a little yeah. bit of another side here because those bloggers, they didn't just get paid zero. I disagree with that. They built uh, up their names, they built careers for themselves. They got a tremendous amount Bingo. of exposure. Yep. So now, going forward, if they do want to have a contra contractual uh, relationship with an actual income, then they can do that. But sure. The question is is AOL well, now going to pay them? Well, that's a big question. Or whether, if not, well, you, and will, they they even, will they even write for AOL? Well, or? The, the entire media is trying to get, get a, the idea that we have free contributors. Forbes.com, which used to be a really leading site, now says thousands of contributors writing free of charge. But if you're a reader, you know, you get what you pay for. I kind of yeah. want a guy who's Tom, been paid to write what he's writing. I'm sorry. I, I'm, hey, I'm, Tom, I'm, let me, I'm, Tom, let me just add. Yeah, yeah, plan. Go ahead. Go I was just going to add one quick thing. It would be nice as a part of this transaction had she kept a significant amount of stock in AOL yeah. just to send the signal and the message to the marketplace. Yeah. She believes no, she in the product. she sent a signal, And her right. comment that they're going to do she better did. than she, people she taking cash. Signal. Signal. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. out of this. All right. Clint David, Lindsey Piegza, and Dennis Neal, thank you all very, very much.